Good morning. Thank you all for taking the time to come out to hear and see this show. As I said, my name is Frank O'Neill, and today's topic, or excuse me, this month's topic is taboo. Now, a taboo is a vehement prohibition of an action based on the belief that such behavior is either too sacred or too accursed for ordinary individuals to undertake. Such prohibitions are present in virtually all societies. The word has been somewhat expanded in the social sciences to strong prohibitions relating to any area of human activity or custom that is sacred or forbidden based on moral judgment and religious beliefs. Breaking a taboo is usually considered objectionable by society in general, not merely a subset of culture. Now, all of you have an icebreaker with regard to today's, this month's title. I will attempt to present to you some information that will cause you to look at your icebreaker and also consider the following two. The definition of taboo, which I have just read, and or ethnic socialization cleansing American style. Back in 1753 to 1784, the world was blessed by a lady by the name of Phyllis Wheatley. She arrived to our shores in 1761 as a slave. She was purchased by John Wheatley. John Wheatley has been known in the colonies to be one of the most progressive slaveholders in the history of slaveholders, in that he taught all his slaves to read, write, and arithmetic, to the point where, in 1773, Phyllis Wheatley was published. Her first book, Poems on Various Subjects, religious and moral, bestseller, yet she was a slave. I recall a gentleman by the name of Frederick Douglass, born in 1818, passed away in 1895. Frederick Douglass was a slave. He went north got his freedom. He wrote his bestseller best in 1845. The interesting thing about Frederick Douglass is, with his life, the impact this one individual had upon communities of color. Because up until this time, we had no interpersonal newspapers, a way of communication back and forth. Frederick Douglass was the leader with regard to this. Now, are these two cases taboo? Ethnic socialization, cleansing, American style? 
which brings me to the most interesting, Elizabeth Jennings. Are we all familiar with Rosa Parks? Would you believe 100 years darn near to the date Elizabeth Jennings made history 1853 in the United States. While on her way to try to get to church, she was running a little late. There were only two type of trolley cars in New York City at that time. For white people and for colored people. Due to scheduling the latter Colored people trolley ran on what I call colored people's time. It got there when it got there. <laughs> and you were happy as heck that it got there. This particular morning, she was to meet her friend at church for services. So she said, hell with this. So she jumped on the white trolley. The conductor looked at her and said, am I dreaming or are you crazy? and proceeded to engage in a conversation. Well, on this particular morning, it was so hot that the passengers started to complain. Shut up, let her sit down, let's go, let's go. I'm burning up in here, we're going to church. So the conductor allows her to sit in the chair. As he's walking back up to get the horse under giddy up, Something interesting happened. Elizabeth cracked on it. He became incensed. He went back and started a commotion, which then entailed he attracted the attention of a police officer, who then got on the trolley. Then they were going back and forth, back and forth. Meanwhile, the trolley is moving on to the point where they got to the other side of town on the other side of where she had to go to, and then they threw her off the trolley. She said, there'll be a cold day in hell, but somebody's going to pay for this. Her father was a man by the name of Thomas Jennings. Thomas Jennings in 1821 was the first man of color to receive a patent. And this patent had to do with what we now know as dry cleaning. He was the pioneer, ladies and gentlemen. When Elizabeth got home, she told Dad. First thing Dad said, now calm down, calm down. Dad contacted Frederick Douglass, who was an abolitionist. Frederick Douglass heard of the case and immediately called his friend a Mr. Arthur. I'll refer to him as that. Mr. Arthur heard and said, listen, my son had just graduated. We will take the case. Charged him $250, which was, in 1853, that's a whole lot of cash. Mr. Arthur's son is Chester A. Arthur the 21st president of the United States. He took Miss Jennings' case in front of an all-male white jury and won. In 1854, anywhere in the city of New York, colored people well-dressed to get on any trolley car they so choose. I find that quite interesting because New York City celebrated this for a number of years and then stopped. So my question, again, taboo, ethnic, Socialization, cleansing American style. 
My next case is my hero, a gentleman by the name of Bass Reeves. Bass Reeves is the lawman's lawman. Bass Reeves became a marshal, a U.S. marshal, for the Arkansas jurisdiction as well as the Oklahoma Indian Territory. At the time that he got the position, he did not know how to read. He self-taught himself how to read. When he got his bail slip to go get a prisoner, he taught himself how to read. Started with the name. Once he learned how to pronounce the name, he broke his way through. But here is what's interesting about Mr. Bass Reeves. They did a TV show about Mr. Bass Reeves when I was a very young guy. The TV show, the main character wore a white hat, a mask, shot silver bullets, rode a white horse, his ace coon boom buddy traveling partner was his best friend, a Native American. And had I known the link between the story creator of The Lone Ranger and why he actually wrote that to honor and tribute Bass Reeves in 1956, I might be president right now. <laughs> but what it comes down to is taboo, ethnic socialization, cleansing, American style, or something else. Which brings me to the poem that I have selected for today. The title is Hanging Tree. See that? See that? See that tree, so it be, I be, he be, she be, we all be. Many, many souls, including entire families, have been set free by that tree. See that? See that? See that tree, so it be, I be, he be, she be, we all be. Rule of life, statute of law, your fibers from your girth propels rings to measure your birth, worth across the surf, over this beautiful earth. See that? See that? See that tree, so it be, living in my history. Who that be? What that be? Where that be? Bury that be? Who that? Who that? Who that be? Bury that be? If I acknowledge minority, who I be, if I acknowledge superiority, who I be, see that, see that, see that tree, so it be, many, many souls, including entire families, have been set free by that tree, damn tree, my history, who I be. A 
Again, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to come out this morning. I am a starving artist. <laughs> I am offering through the chamber. I have books for sale. They're all discounted. <laughs> Cash, check, or credit card. And my final point before I introduce my colleague. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a matter of who we are. It's a matter of who we can be. Now, at this time, I would like to introduce my colleague, filmmaker extraordinaire, Mr. Jason Fisher. Jason. Good morning, everyone. Um, Frank reminded me we met about seven, eight years ago and um, it's one of these things to where you are in a city and you know someone who knows someone and I ran across Frank and, and when you meet Frank, I mean, you, you're, you're just, you're wondering if, if most of you who live in this town if you haven't, you're wondering, where did you, where did you come from? And uh, I, I think I've had a few people say the same thing about myself, but Frank is, is beyond that and uh, he shared a piece of, he shared actually several pieces of work that we've worked on and um, he came to me about uh, maybe a year or two ago and presented this piece to me. And as I'm sure a lot of you, the, the breath just sucked out of me. And for me, I'm a very visual artist, obviously, with being a filmmaker. I said, I'll, I'll work with you on this. <laughs> and fortunately, we had a relationship because I don't get to tell, it wasn't like a client situation, because I don't get to tell clients, hey, you should just have to let me do whatever I want to do. And uh, you can't ask any questions. That was kind of my, I was like, I'll do this. You can't ask any questions. You just got to let me do what I can do. And, 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 and not only can you not tell clients that, but Frank's not a client, he's not difficult, but you definitely can't tell Frank that times like 10,000. <laughs> so for him to let me get away with that, I was I was just floored, and um, it really came out though. At the end of the day, though, I had no idea what to do with it. It was one of these things I just wanted to create. It was so passionate, I was so driven. I don't know if you've ever been so blinded by something that by the time I got done with it, I had no idea what the heck to even do with it, and I still don't. So I'm glad to share it with you. I appreciate you, you know, uh, checking this out with us and and Frank uh, giving me the trust and, and the love that. <laughs> Sure, I, I love you. And um, I'm, I hope that you uh, are inspired and, and that you'll share this with everyone because I'm really excited that, and Kim kind of brought it up, is that it needs to be seen. We'll have some links to it and, and just share it. You know, it's, that's what art's for. It's not about um, anything else but sharing. So I'm happy to share it with y'all. Thank you. Like us. And friend us on Facebook, y'all. <laughs> That's my last word. Several off-duty officers beat Jude at a house party in Bayview, accusing Jude of stealing a police badge that was never found. <laughs> You're being arrested if you don't put. Oh, fuck! There's nothing like the loss of a child. Testing. One, two, three, four, five.
I do not use the N-word. Will you simply see? I do not use the N-word. Do you know its history? I do not use the N-word. It is, after all, created just for me. Purely and simply to defile me, to mortify me, to humiliate me, to ridicule me, to embroil me. And we use this word so cavalierly. Does that act make you foot loose and fancy free? For as we still battle the chains of slavery, why do we call this noun so proudly? When will the day come that we finally remove masses revelry? I will end this tyranny. I will end this debauchery. I cannot be consumed by the elephant in their duality. I will end this vestige of slavery. I do not use the N-word. Can you simply see? I am not a three-fifths minority. I am somebody.